Hayden wants a postnup. Zach wants his child. And Karen is 100% show. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another sister's video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about season six, episode 16. This will be the preview. The breakdown of the end of episode teaser that we got to see. I'm going to tell you what I think a lot of these visuals actually mean. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. And start at the top of this teaser. It is a scene between Hayden and Tamara. Tamara finally answered the phone, finally returned a few text messages, and she want to hear what he got to say. And all Hayden got to say is, oh, baby, 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 please, I need you. <laughs> okay, he doesn't actually say that in the trailer, but he butters her up so much that we get to see her actually smiling. And the scene itself is, is cuts off once we get to the point where he asks for a post -nup. He wants them to go ahead and give their marriage a try for six months. However, to do so, she would need to sign a post -nup. Now, we know that our girl Tamara is on a mission. She might be deviating from Fatima's initial mission, but she got plans to get it all. So I doubt that she's actually going to go along with signing this post -nup. And it's going to be very interesting to watch her in this episode try to weasel her way out of it is she gonna try to sex him out of it is she gonna try to uh coerce him out of it is she gonna try to double talk him out of it is she going to walk away and basically give him an ultimatum like look I ain't signing this post up and you need to decide here and now if you want to stay married to me which I'm kind of leaning towards there now the craziest thing about it is for me I have actually been hoping that Tamara would have a change of heart and she actually started to fall for Hayden. But it's kind of clear to me, even just looking at this, that that is probably not the case. I think that she is definitely still working whatever version of her plan this is. And that is why she's back. She gave him a couple days to stew. He didn't show up at her house. He'd been calling her phone. He'd been leaving her text messages. So she already know that she got this boy on the ropes. Now it's just time to go in for <laughs> the kill. Now, if she doesn't sign this post up and they make it at least 30 days, then they won't be able to annul the marriage, which will basically like completely nullify the marriage as if it didn't happen. And then at that point, anytime after that, if they separate, it would actually be a divorce. And I'm pretty sure in the state of Georgia, without a prenup, without a post up, and you're getting divorced, there's going to be a little bit of spousal support or alimony that is going to have to transpire. So I think that um, Tamara is dead set on getting something. She might not be able to walk away with everything and to be able to clean Hayden out. Or she might be able to do that if, you know, she gets back into a relationship with him and gets access to his finances. But bare minimum, she's actually walking away with something. She leaving here with something. She from round away. And that's going to be a little bit of alimony. And I'm actually really, really excited to see it. Seeing Hayden fall in love and be open and like let down his little misogynistic guard and lean out of the incel part of him and lean into being vulnerable and open and and to see that he actually could cherish a woman if the right woman presented themselves and he wasn't too busy trying to focus on making a woman like him his his story his character has actually become more interesting over time now who hasn't is gary borders and his ass still needs to exit stage left now from there y'all we're taking back to the duplex and we got to see at the very end of last week's episode that heather shows up with the cop to get michael we talked about this one our sister's keeper so if you want a full deep dive into this moment because we got to actually look on both sides like why hasn't heather called or why hasn't heather shown up before now y'all she could have just got off work but again check out the replay of our sister's keeper which is a live after show and podcast hosted by myself and ali nick official where we talk about the new sisters episodes right after each episode so that's on wednesday nights after it premieres i'll have it linked in the description box down below so that you can go ahead and check that out but we pick up right where they left off right zach is threatening to go to to involve the courts because he's going to fight for michael and heather's talking about she don't actually care it looks like the police officer has walked away and this is just them two now and it's like okay we're in co-parenting territory y'all gonna have to figure this out heather blink twice honey if you are in an abusive relationship blink twice honey if you need help because you will have to have some explaining to do what is going on with michael's back why is he hiding food in his in his um 
in his pockets. Why is he playing outside all day? Like, no more. Your your sister, your men, nobody else gets to watch Michael anymore. When you are at work, I ain't watching Michael. When you off work, you'll be he'll be back with you. Like, that's where we're gonna start, and that's where this is gonna stop. Like for me, I get Zach wanting to combat what Michael is going through and make sure that his son doesn't experience what he has already experienced growing up and the trauma that came along with that, right? But newsflash, Zach, it's been three years. He's already experienced a little bit of something. If you actually want to try to get the best possible scenario for Michael as soon as possible, i.e. not necessarily having to go straight to the courts because that is going to take some time. If you want to start today and better Michael's life today, you're going to have to figure out how to work with Heather, how to navigate this, how to be the bigger person. If she's being petty and if she's being ghetto and if she's being ridiculous, what are you going to do to counteract that and set your son up to be in a position where he's actually going to be able to thrive? First, you start by supporting and helping Heather. No, that does not mean that you have to give her money, but that means y'all split the time. When she's at work, you got Michael. Until you're able to build a rapport, until you're able to establish a relationship with your son, and then you can actually go to the courts and have a track record of like, this is how he is with me, this is how he is with her. This is what I can provide, this is what she can provide. That's how this is done. Using a pair throwing court in her face after one night of being with your son where you had him sleeping on a sofa. The leather sofa, Zach. But one night of being with your son is not really scamming her because she has had this boy for three years. Zachariah? Like, let's be for real, just really, really quick because it's almost absurd to me the idea that Zach thinks that he can just come in and take this boy and he can just do it because he's Zach. That's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. But we're going to get to see this play out. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. Honestly, I can get Zach and this Heather conversation. And then the next episode, we get to the actual law firm where he get to talk to Fatima. Because I need a little bit more little bit more time with like these characters alone versus the team of content they are wearing me out with the team of content and sisters zach talks to heather that's all we need from him in this episode and we're gonna we're gonna go from there now ray cross town at the burnt down salon that tyler perry is sliding in there been burnt down for two weeks randomly okay mr perry it's karen and she is talking to Pam. And she's like, I'm 100% sure that Zach is the father. Now I know that he probably is not. I'm still going to report on it. I'm still going to do my reviews and break down and say that Zach is the father. Because that's what they're saying in the story. But in this moment, that is when they told me that he's not actually the father. Because if it's one thing for certain, two things for sure. Tyler Perry is going to play Karen Mott as a character. And if he got her 100% show about something, then he is definitely coming down the line with it is not actually the case. And if you do follow me, if you've been keeping up with my sister's content, I do have a couple previews for season seven because they had character breakdowns and synopsis um, leak a little bit early. And I talked about those. And one of the things that is coming up in season seven, which has an all new writer's room. Yes, Mr. Perry is not writing season seven. Is that Karen is going to be going to get tested for paternity yet again. <sighs> well, don't say that I ain't never mentioned it because I just mentioned it here. Again, for the breakdowns, I'm going to keep it moving and say that Zach is the father. But now it's very, very clear that Tyler is leaning to Zach is actually not the father. Because if it's one thing that Tyler's going to do is not give Karen one what she wants, two what she needs, or three actually prove her to be true and more often than not he likes to play with this character and y'all know i don't like that but it is what it is and last but certainly not least is a scene with maurice and sabrina headed down to andy's office so that they can talk to her about what happened the day before and they get a call from the district attorney in on the way now apparently andy also got a call and they're basically asking i think or the da is asking for them to come in so that he can tell them in person that they have been cleared of all charges he's dropping all the charges and they can go ahead and walk away but you know mr perry got to dangle the carrot you know they got to make it a little bit more dramatic so sabrina and um maurice a worry Andy is like this is not necessarily a good thing I don't know what it could be but it, it, it probably is not necessarily a good thing it could be very very serious so 
not this episode, but I think the next episode, we're going to actually get to see them all go down there. And then that's when they'll actually be able to be clear. But we as the audience don't even need to worry about that. So Tyler, come on and Usher and Sabrina some really strong storylines, maybe something really strong with Rich so that we can release the foolishness that has been this bank robbery storyline. And that's it. Those are all my thoughts for the next upcoming episode. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts? What are your theories? What are your predictions? I'm your guest sister, you let us talk TV with. I cannot wait to check out your thoughts in the comment section and I'm gonna see you in the next one.